All right. Now, once we determine the cloud serve deployment model, right, what's going to be the best environment in which we're going to store our data or host our resources, the next element that we have to think about is what are we really looking for from moving to the cloud? What sort of cloud-based services am I using? You know, I've got software as a service, I've got platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. And of course, the reality really is often we're utilizing more than one. This is kind of referred to as a stack. So we might have software as a service on top of platform as a service on top of infrastructure as a service. And we'll kind of get a feel for how that works. So what you'll find is you will trade flexibility for ease of use or you'll trade control for ease of use. We'll see how this goes. So when we talk about software as a service, and this is what most folks are familiar with, even if they don't call it SaaS. Software as a service has been around forever. You know, people have been using Yahoo and Gmail and all those different varieties of mail applications for, for several decades, a couple of decades now. And so when we look at that, you don't have to download Yahoo or Gmail onto your system. You're accessing it through the Internet. You have mail. You know, you can use it as you want. Now, of course, that idea has expanded to other types of software. We see Office 365, for instance. Now, rather than having to download Word and Excel on my systems, I log in, I access them in the cloud, I use the resources that I need, the data stored in the cloud. Um, you know, we've got that for customer resource management. We have help desk services, project management. I mean, you name it, you can access those services in the cloud, right? Software as a service. Huge benefits in that, again, I no longer have to worry about my clients. I don't have to play the upgrade game for physical hardware and architecture. I don't have to worry about patching uh, applications. The data also is stored in a back-end database at the client or in, um, you know, the provider's uh, interface. Well, we access the data through the interface, but the data is traditionally stored at the provider, so they have the, the, um, uh, the impetus is on them is to protect the information that we store. All right, so we can access our applications from anywhere, anytime. I get so tired of having to install the same applications. I probably have, you know, 15 different computers throughout a month that I access. How difficult to have to install on all of those systems. Then we got to deal with licensing. Um, you know, that becomes expensive. I got to remember to patch. All of that's taken care of for us with software as a, a service. Another huge benefit, standardization. We like standards. And the more complex your environment is, the more difficult it is to manage and the more difficult it is to secure. You know, when we look at elements like, um, or environments, like when I first got into computing, you would have all sorts of different operating systems on a network, all sorts of different software, all sorts of different protocols. You know, we'd run our backend server on Novell, Microsoft clients on the desktops using either TCP IP or more likely using NetBuoy. Um, Novell used IPX, SPX. Um, Apple systems used Apple Talk. We would have Unix systems using TCP IP. So all these different protocols, all these different operating systems, then there would be applications that were for Unix, applications for Windows. So now all of that, we connect to the Internet. We have a consistent software environment to the latest patch that we're all accessing all, that, all those problems with compatibility. Just poof magically goes away. Tremendous benefit for software as a service. Now, platform as a service. Let's say that we're designing web applications. We want to allow our users to um, update information to make purchases from a web storefront. 
We want to be able to have employees access our network from home and fill out time cards. We want to create all of these custom applications to provide services to our customers. Well, to develop software, there are a lot of tools that are necessary to develop software, right? We're going to need languages. We're going to need um, libraries. We're going to need tools for error, uh, for uh, testing the applications. We're going to have to be able to look at these applications on a whole lot of different environments. You know, it used to be web apps. You'd want to see how they displayed in Internet Explorer and Netscape. Now think of all the browsers. Now think of all the different devices that are going to be accessing these web apps. That's a lot to host in-house. So to design web applications for my customers, platform as a service is going to be much more useful. Okay? It's going to take the responsibility of providing all of those resources to the developers. It's going to give us an environment where there's already an operating system. We have the tools that are necessary at our disposal, and we can focus on designing the apps. Now, um, again, multiple languages. I can use my choice of languages. Um, so as a developer, I can use what I want to use, whatever language I prefer. We've got flexibility. We can scale up and down. So again, those same benefits we talked about. Or I may choose to just move it all to the cloud, right? Let's just take all of these resources we've had to host on site and let's move it up to the cloud. And when we talk about infrastructure as a service, what we're buying is a virtual environment. We're buying virtual hard drives, virtual devices. So I don't have the responsibility of any of the infrastructure, but I install the operating systems in use. I configure the virtual environment. And what I'm getting from the uh, cloud service provider is I'm getting the compute power, if you will. I'm getting CPU utilization, memory. I'm getting network. I'm getting uh, disk storage, right? So all of those components that we normally needed, this will appear to us as if it's physically located, but we're actually accessing these resources across the cloud. So there, again, we don't have to worry about depreciation of assets. We don't have to worry about day-to-day -day maintenance of hardware. All of those elements are hosted on the cloud service providers um, framework and infrastructure, it's out of our hands now. Now, if we go back to software as a service, I'm just going to go back just a little bit. Of course, we still have our client systems, right? And we're accessing the software through the internet. Um, we don't get the degree of flexibility. When we go to software as a service, we're getting whatever service our service provider offers us. Right? So if we're going to use Office 365, we get PowerPoint, we get Excel, we get, you know, whatever else is thrown in with uh, Word and, you know, the services. We don't get the degree of flexibility that we might have otherwise. We're going to have a service provider that gives us, you know, that leases software, if you will, to us, and we get what we get. We don't get those tons of options for customization. Now, if we move down to platform as a service, we develop the applications, so we create the apps that we want, and we have some flexibility there. When we go to infrastructure as a service,